ধন্যবাদ আজকের সভাপতি এবং আজকে আপনারা যেখানে আছেন আমাকে যখন সাবির ফোন করে বলল যে এই বিষয়ে বিশ্বাস করে বঙ্গবন্ধুর উপরে বলার জন্য সো আমি ভাবলাম যে লেট মি টেক দিস অপরচুনিটি টু স্পিক সামথিং দ্যাট উড বি অফকোর্স অন বঙ্গবন্ধু বাট ইকুয়ালি রেলেভেন্ট আজকের আমরা যারা আছি এবং আজকের যে প্রজন্ম আছে তাদের জন্য আমাদের বাসায় আসতেন আমার বাবার বন্ধু ছিলেন I used to sit on his lap. <laughs> so, I was a man who was a man who was a man who was a which I think is a, is a rare even for, uh, for many. Uh, so, my deepest respect uh, goes to the father of the nation and of course, uh, all the family members uh, uh, who faced this uh, gruesome uh, killing uh, back uh, on 15th August 1975. Uh, the topic jeta holo je bangabandhu and and, and global peace uh, why he fought for global peace and and how it relates uh, to the bangladesh dream uh, let me take money it to pichone the power of the republic uh, why he fought uh, for uh, independence uh, and and the republic uh, that we got Uh, the whole republic understanding is very old kintu oneki bhabe je amra eta buji europe theke peyechi which is not true uh, ganashangho uh, was there in this part of the world uh, as early as 6th century bc with the lichavi republic uh, were the earliest uh, and the whole of greater bengal had series of uh, republican governments then then and and they were elected and tar dhara bahi kothay Uh, we get uh, uh, Gopal uh, as the elected Raja. Uh, the Pal dynasty started with, uh, with Gopal who was, uh, was elected. And we have this concept of Raja and Maharaja uh, precisely because uh, the Maharaja uh, in, in, in those years, uh, at times they were uh, elected by the small kings. Uh, more importantly, uh, Bengal was under the Buddhist uh, uh, regime for over 400 years. সেই জিনিসটা আমরা ভুলে যাই লট অফ বুদ্ধিস্ট এলিমেন্টস আর স্টিল দেয়ার না ওই ধারাবাহিকতায় উই গেট হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ ইস পিপলস রিপাবলিক অফ বাংলাদেশ বঙ্গবন্ধু ওয়াজ ভেরি পার্টিকুলার ইন নেইমিং দিস কান্ট্রি অ্যাজ পিপলস রিপাবলিক দেয়ার ওয়াজ নো ইফস অ্যান্ড বার্ডস মানে চিন্তা হয়নি যে কোন নাম হবে রিপাবলিক হবে না তার হাতে লেখা আছে পিপলস রিপাবলিক অফ বাংলাদেশ দ্য ডকুমেন্টস and that we now jeta ekhon paoa jacche after the us uh, government jokhon uh, documents gulo chhere diyeche uh, we see hate lakha ekbare people's republic of bangladesh uh, and and this is uh, very important uh, because the first exceptionality dokkhin uh, asia jodi bangladesh jodi exceptionality hoy tale prothom exceptionality holo people's republic of bangladesh we are the only people's republic in south asia There are altogether five people's republic now in the world. Uh, the oldest one is uh, uh, North Korea uh, that uh, came back in 1948 and then China. Uh, Tarpor, uh, we have uh, uh, Algeria and then the fourth is Laos and we are the fifth one. So uh, these are the five people's uh, republic, none of the South Asian countries of people's republic and there are good reason why uh, mujib went for uh, people's republic or why the wisdom at that particular time you cannot nam koron a people's republic for uh, it a lot of people would say that maybe uh, he was very much uh, fascinated with uh, with people's republic of china which is partly true given je bui amra ekhon porchi tar chiner safare byapare he was uh, you know enamored by the kind of development he saw then uh, but my argument uh, is is little bit different i think people's republic kora hoychilo there are context and the context is the second exceptionality jeta amra south asia pai uh, we are the only south asian country which fought for a liberation war uh, 
yes lot of people hoyto shobhash boshe kotha bolbe indian national army kotha bolbe but they never uh, conquered they never came to power and then we have seen uh, netaji shobhash bosh uh, later on you know shook hands with the fascist regimes both hitler uh, then with japan and and that detract the whole of whatever he was trying to do uh, but bangladesh is an exception we are the only south asian country which where uh, the security forces and the people fought together and i am i am witness to that i mean i was just a class 9 student uh, i left my parents uh, i went to agartala uh, and i remember uh, that i was led uh, by uh, an epr jawan not even an officer uh, we were 16 to 17 Uh, young kids. I was the youngest of all a lot. Bulk of them were university students, and uh, the PR Jawan. We followed him like uh, you know, like anything, uh, because he was the only one who uh, knew about arms. He was the only one who knew ki bhabe kotha luka to bhabe ki bhabe kotha bhabe. And we had no knowledge, so uh, he was our leader at, at that particular time. And and I've seen uh, the a combination uh, between. uh in you know, the military forces uh, and the police uh, and and janogon uh that's a rare exception so the kind of thing that you see in now also uh, uh very much is part of that uh, experience jeta dakshin asia onno kon onno kon desh paini and the third exceptionality which is which is interesting one which is a foreign policy principle eta uh, amra bhule jai Uh, is the principle of friendship towards all malice towards none this was a principle not uh, it did not come after 1971 it was a pre 71 principle of awami league manifesto under the leadership of uh, mujib uh, we see back in june 1970 jokhon uh, manifesto prakash uh, kara holo this is the line lakha uh, and i think is extraordinary line ebon uh, 1970 e bolche in keeping with the basic principles of friendship to all and malice towards none we wish to live in peaceful coexistence with all countries including our neighbors on the basis of justice and mutual respect for each other's security consistently with this aim we shall not and cannot afford to be drawn into global power conflicts which are raging in the world today uh, absolutely uh, extraordinary a karone bolchi and and i'll come to that because this was the period of uh, of cold war of polarized politics globally shei shomoy dariye bola and when pakistan was a member of crto and cento uh, it is is something uh, you know jeta amar monohana onno kono deshe ei bhabe sposto to ache and and this is and and, south, and bangladesh is, is an exception in south asia because uh, we have made this into a principle jeta onno desh ekhono korte pareni and this was reiterated in in 1973 in the asian peace conference jekhane bangabandhu bolchen we firmly believe in policy of friendship to all and malice towards none the policy of peaceful coexistence on ekhi bhabe je ekhan theke buji shuru hoyeche is not is way back in june 1970 1970 theke now the period ta kintu khub bhoyankor eta onnotomo period chilo and this is a period of cold war absolute polarization and this uh, the fisheye projection will will give you a sense you have on the one hand soviet union uh, with india allied you have another hand usa and pakistan allied and if bangladesh in the middle our number one friend was of course at that at that particular time india and through india of course soviet union and our number one enemy at that time was pakistan and through pakistan the usa this was the ideological conflict at the same time a political military conflict oi shomoy dariye bola friendship towards all malice towards none uh, you know you you you, you require uh, quite uh, guts Uh, given the fact that bangladesh's economy uh, was highly dependent uh, on 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 us for for many reason uh, one of the thing is is food aid and of course uh, even uh, our exports uh, bulk of it all was uh, towards the us uh, and the western countries so what we have uh, uh, first phase uh, is uh, what i call diplomacy of recognition uh, this was a unique part uh, and and very challenging part uh and and we see how quickly it came ekhon dekhle mone hocche my god how is it possible there are some countries they wait for years after years uh us recognition came in april 1972 uh, this speech a chobi ta jodi for er sathe chobi ta jodi aro pore 74 er but to give but to give you a sense uh in april 1972 as as quick as that uh, and that was immediately after the withdrawal of uh, the indian troops from bangladesh 
uh, very quickly negotiated and, and uh, Indira Gandhi understood very well the quicker they leave the better uh, and then in 74 just imagine in 1974 we get the OIC and Pakistan recognition which was very critical because unless Pakistan gives the recognition you, you don't have the firm standing and and that we we, we got in, in February 74 and which laid uh, you know the path for us to get the full membership by September 1974. This is, is a unique case where a country, a newborn country, particularly Cold War Shuma, highly polarized at the world. Uh, and we didn't have, you know, uh, we didn't have so much wealth, uh, no oil and gas as, as you know, one, one talks about, nothing of that kind. Uh, but it looks like uh, the diplomacy was played in, in, in a remarkable way. Now, this diplomacy of recognition, the central point, uh, as, as I've gone through uh, his speeches, uh, I, I, I label it central piece, Chilo, uh, the culture of peace. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the interesting part. Uh, and, and, and let me uh, cite from my paper, I'm, I'm sure you will get the hard copy. I understand Asian Society is going to uh, publish their paper, but uh, let me uh, cite. Uh, this is what I, I say in the paper. Bangabandhu remained firmly committed to the idea of fostering peace nationally, regionally, and globally. In fact, a content analysis of 22 multilateral and bilateral events between 72 and 75 shows that Sheikh Mujib, while speaking at such fora, uttered peace 151 times, followed by the words world and Asia 76 and 33 times respectively. Such commitment to peace comes not only from his personal experience, coming in the wake of his own internment of 4,682 days for launching political camping against the repressive state of Pakistan, but also from his awareness of the age-old civilizational quest of the people of Bangladesh. And, and this is the civilizational quest that I was referring, you know, uh, taking us back uh, way to Likchavi Republic uh, and of course the PAL and all. Uh, Bangladesh may be a new country, but it's a very, very old civilization. It's much older than all the European civilization that you see, the Western civilization, much older uh, than, uh, of course, uh, the United States. And that's precisely the reason why when Gandhi was asked uh, uh, in London uh, by a journalist that, what do you think about Western civilization? Uh, Gandhi responded by saying, I think it is a good idea. Uh, so you can well imagine uh, that it was not even uh, formed. <laughs> it was just uh, uh, what you call in, in, a, in an idea form. Uh, not so much uh, uh, beyond that. Now, 74 a Jokhan, when he went to uh, Jatish Shongai uh, uh, General Assembly, he, he made it very clear. And, and, and this, is, uh, this is an interesting uh, statement that he made uh, back in 25th September 74. Uh, Shebolche, the very struggle of Bangladesh symbolized the universal struggle for peace and justice. Not national struggle, not even regional. This universe, it was therefore only natural that Bangladesh from its very inception from its very inception, so stand by firmly by the side of by the side of oppressed people of the world. That that's that's unique. Again, keep in mind uh, we are still in Cold War phase. Sheikh uh, Bola, we are going to side with the oppressed uh, people of the world, and and that is precisely what happened uh, with our constitution. Uh, we have a clause, Jeta Aro, it again firmly bolche. So some of the things comes out of culture of peace. Shetaholo, uh, Bangamudu's uh, stand against war and absolutely firmly, there was no ifs and buts. Emun Bolche, 1972, day, as early as 1972. Uh, here I may refer, and I'm quoting him, here I may refer to the continuing tragedy in Vietnam. My government firmly believes that this tragedy must come to an end because we know from our experience what sufferings peoples of this region must be going through. Peace can be achieved only if all foreign forces are withdrawing, leaving the people of Vietnam to decide their own destiny. On our part, we shall support all initiatives for peace, not only in Southeast Asia, but all over the world." Unquote. So I have, uh, I mean, among the diplomats, you know, the point is uh, Vietnam, as you know, uh, is not with us when it comes to Rohingya. Uh, they support Myanmar. And I've said that somebody should go and tell them, look, when uh, Vietnam was under the, uh, the American occupation, it, it, Bangladesh was one of the few countries which recognized the provisional government. Even the first time Jokun Chhatro Marajai independent Bangladesh, Prothom Dui Chhatro Jokun Marajai, 
uh, it was anti vietnam warrior protester shumai mm. our students sacrifice for vietnam their picture should be absolutely mane hanoi ba ki bola ho chi minh er airport er baire thaka uchit boro kore that how our people have sacrificed we have never seen vietnam none of the students well, the two students who died they did not even kokhoni vietnam dekheni but the way people uh, supported the vietnam cause so ekhon jokhon ami shuni je tara myanmar ke support dicche which is you know jeta genocide commit koreche you know the vietnam should be told come on you know uh, look into the history and see what we have done to you you have never none of the vietnamese died for bangladesh but there are bangladeshis uh, who have died for uh, vietnam so against war was very important then comes against arms race uh, even back in 1970 uh, in the awami league manifesto sposto bole dicche we believe that continued participation in ciato cento and other military pacts is against our national interest and therefore favor the immediate withdrawal of pakistan from ciato cento and other military pacts and this has continued even today so whenever kono Uh, country jokhon bole you know uh, join this alliance or that alliance we have always said it, it, it's not it's not in our gene uh, it's not in our civilizational context uh, we are ready to have all the economic uh, relationship uh, but when it comes to military thing uh, sorry uh, that's not our cup of uh, tea and 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 it goes back as i said uh, way back uh, to the army uh, army manifesto back in june 1970 equally important is uh, bangabandhu stand against colonialism and racialism and 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 this particular statement jeta commonwealth conference bole chilen ottawa te in 1973 even sposto to bolchen keep in mind again we are in cold war she bolchen those who even today are struggling to vindicate their right of self determination and their basic human rights in south africa rhodesia nambia angola mozambique and other parts of africa against the forces of colonialism and racialism must have support from all those who value human freedom we are pledged by our constitution to support the just struggle of all oppressed people against colonialism and racialism no ifs and buts so what you have uh, for bangladesh uh, at, at that particular time uh, you have friends or at least uh, bangabandhus stand with uh, mandela ho chi minh arafat and fidel castro and you can easily see why united states was so upset are are mare this four pictures will give you a sense uh, the last one is very important as you know jamra jut uh, bail uh, 40000 bails sport uh, karate uh, america food aid bondo kore diye chilo pl politi title 2 bondo kore diye chilo which was uh, which was required and and that's that what produced the famine uh, back in 74 uh, she uh, food aid is it via soviet union uh, they were the ones who bought it from the united states and came via but by the time it came uh, uh, it was it was late so uh, the famine was uh, an human constructed and uh, you know one should make it very clear that how uh, united states was uh, involved uh, in that uh, uh, famine so these four leaders will give you a sense uh, the kind of integrity and kind of strength inner strength Uh, that bangabandhu had to to stay with them you know none of them are favorites in the world at that particular time none of them are favorite to the west all are fighting mandela tokhono khomotay asheni ho chi minh tokhono vietnam united koreni arafat to ekhono mane plo palestine is still in in a bad shape well cuba survived uh, 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 somehow uh, but but look at the enormous guts uh, one should have and that's precisely the reason why phil castro when he saw bangabandhu and after the discussion with bangabandhu he said that look uh, i mean jimon himalay dekhini but i have seen the himalayas today that's the context the context is you can see uh, the vibe that he was creating among these people which is which is extraordinary if we if we see if we talk now je uh, dhoroner jara dissenters tader sathe somporko rakhar byapare hoyto oneki apotti korbe but uh, bangabandhu never had a second thoughts on that so this is an interesting part equally peace in south asia is also he made it flagged so early jeta ekhon dekhle obak hoye jay je how you know the insights that he had and i'm i'm talking about 6 february 1972 the first visit that he made outside bangladesh after coming to um, uh, after independence and after returning home she kolkata e boshe 
uh, this is what he's saying. And you can easily see what kind of South Asia uh, he had in his mind. Now, February te bola, you can already at a genocide way che, uh, India sa the Pakistan er uh, riti moto at a, at a yudho, uh, oi shomai, a statement of dawa, uh, I think is extraordinary. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, it is my earnest hope that there will at last be peace and stability in the subcontinent. Let there be an end once for all to the sterile policy of confrontation between neighbors. Just imagine, you know, they're telling, telling Indira Gandhi or telling India that you have to stop your confrontation with neighbors. Amra Nijaraja at a confrontation Then she bolche, let us not fitter away our national resources, but use them to lift the standard of living of our people. As for us, we will not be found wanting to cooperate with all concern for creating an area of peace in South Asia, where we could live side by side as good neighbors and pursue constructive policies for the benefit of our peoples. And this is what I say, uh, the idea get a pore matrix which has SARC, uh, the South Asian Association Regional Corporation, you, you get that in 72, a particular version of the very idea of SAR get a poor materialized which uh, comes, I think a, a statement will, will tell you that the logical foundation of SAR is actually Choi February 1972. Now, so you see uh, the uh, global peace, regional peace is, is, is central and, and, and there are good reasons uh, 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 for that. Uh, and, and one of the good reasons, Hodoje, Judy, Shanti not uh, and, and if you read my paper, you will see uh, the argument is uh, you cannot save your resources. The more confrontations you have, uh, you will not be able to have all the resources uh, to you know uh, invest in education, in infrastructure, and all other things. Uh, so get out of this uh, conflict. Go for peace. Go for world peace. So peace was central uh, to his his. Uh, his mindset, his, his thinking. And, and this is where uh, the point uh, about Bangladesh dream and the idea of Shonar Bangla comes. And, and let me uh, cite again, and I go back to Choi February 1972. Uh, in 6th uh, February 1972, absolute destruction. And I'm sure uh, those of who are in the platform, bulk of them, uh, the seniors one would, would know how how terrible the mess was. Uh, uh, but look what he's, what he's saying, Choi February 1972. The occupation army had ravaged my country. Three million people were killed by them. They killed intellectuals, educationalists, and scientists, and dishonored my mothers and sisters. They looted all that we had. But the people, as one man, fought with an iron determination and annihilated the beastly strengths of those hordes. And today, with some determination, with same determination and confidence, the people of Bangladesh will build a Shonar Bangla on the ashes of these ruins. That's the point. That's a tremendous capacity to imagine something. A lot of our friends, they have left the country, actually. Uh, they, they have gone for... American dream or some uh, British dream or other dream, you know, but no, this is the place you have all the destruction, but this is where I can dream of a Shonar Bangla on the ashes of this ring. I, I think this is very an empowering uh, statement, uh, which I think should be recorded uh, in Shujok in, Pai. Uh, and, and this is what I, 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 I now come very quickly to the contemporary, the, the relevance that we have of, of Bangabundu and the Shonar Bangla and what I uh, refer to as uh, uh, Bangladesh dream. Uh, without dream, you, you can't uh, move, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and I say this, uh, I've seen uh, American, uh, American dream, how they have, you know, uh, uh, they have taken uh, our children and, and grandchildren uh, and uh, you can't blame uh, because of course, you know, dreamer pichone kichu yo thake. Now we also have something called Chinese dream. The Chinese have also constructed something called Chinese dream, uh, and and they have also made uh, an unique uh, contribution uh, to human lives uh, uh, in their country. So 
the important to have a dream is mane eta bola jay na but what i want to focus is keep in mind 72 ekebare kichu nai shekhane bolche that we will build a sonar bangla so what i will now you know introduce you is six areas মনে অনেকটা তাত্ত্বিক ভাবে ছয় ছয় দফার মতন ছয়টা এরিয়া বার হয়েছে বাট দেয়ার ক্যান বি আদার এরিয়াস অফ কোর্স বাট দিস সিক্স এরিয়াস ওয়ার উই ক্যান লুক ইন টু এন্ড 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 সি হোয়াট বাংলাদেশ ড্রিম ক্যান বি ওয়ান অর অ্যাবাউট ওয়ান অফ কোর্স ইজ দ্য ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার দ্যাটস দ্যাটস ভেরি ফান্ডামেন্টাল এন্ড এন্ড বঙ্গবন্ধু ওয়াজ ভেরি পার্টিকুলার 74 এ নিউজিল্যান্ডের প্রধানমন্ত্রীকে সে বলছে and and this see how how things have changed she tokhon bolche we have reconstructed the infrastructure of the economy and recently we have launched the five year plan and then the plan aims among other things at completing the task of reconstruction and increasing the rate of growth of gdp to at least 5.5% what we have crossed that line of but tokhon 5.5 te sangatik মনে হতো দেন সে বলছে লাস্ট লাইন এট দ্য এন্ড অফ দ্য প্ল্যান পিরিয়ড আওয়ার ডিপেন্ডেন্স অন এক্সটার্নাল অ্যাসিস্টেন্স উইল বি সাবসেনশিয়ালি রিডিউস ওয়েল ইট হ্যাজ গট রিডিউস আর এনিথিং উই আর নো লঙ্গার ডিপেন্ডেন্ট অন দ্য কাইন্ড অফ ডিপেন্ডেন্স দ্যাট উই হ্যাভ ব্যাক দেন ফর দ্য ব্রিজ ইজ ইজ অ্যান এক্সাম্পল আই থিঙ্ক ইট দেল বি মোর রিসার্চ অন নট দ্য ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার ইট সেলফ বাট দ্য পলিটিক্স দ্যাট ওয়েন থ্রু ইন বিল্ডিং দিস ব্রিজ বিকজ দিস ইজ দ্য ব্রিজ ওয়ের এজ i'm sure all of you are familiar that the world bank refused uh, and then of course uh, the honorable prime minister uh, had the strength i think she got it also from her father saying that no we will build it anyway and 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 this is this is the unique uh, feature uh, where the strength of the country uh, one can easily see uh, so it's a, it's a mind changing thing and this is where the dream ought to be and when, and when i talk about infrastructure of course the infrastructure everything not only uh communication uh, roads and highways but infrastructure in in all meaningful ways infrastructure of universities infrastructure of other uh, whatever institutions you are building but let's keep on on communication itself uh i think we need to start thinking about high speed train connectivity connecting the eight divisional headquarters this will change the entire bangladesh scenario because high speed train and i'm familiar with in, with, with china particularly uh, uh, you know i have traveled uh, in china almost for last 30 years <laughs> i have seen how china developed i have i have visited china so much that even some of the chinese taro uh, visit koreni uh, i've gone to tibet i've gone uh, i've seen the yellow river you, you name anything i've gone to hainan you know i've traveled a lot in 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 last 30 years and i've seen how they've done it and one of the thing that they have done is infrastructure is very important central to it and uh, jekan i think the government is right on the track doing something now high speed train on the average is a 3 350 you know miles per hour or, or over kilometers jete pare uh, which will i mean just to give an example and i think our paper is written uh dhaka to select you can go in less than one hour if you can go to dhaka and select become less than one hour you don't have to stay in dhaka to work in dhaka you can stay in select and come and work in dhaka just imagine how things will change and then, and this is this is a normal technology it's, it's it's not it's nothing but the chinese have shown how to make best use of the technology they have high speed train everywhere now and and i remember one of the chinese scholar was telling me that look you know we can get the high speed train all the way to dhaka from, from beijing and they have practically and amake bolechilo almost 10 years back but look uh, they have taken the high speed train all the way to tibet i myself uh, ami chendu theke tibet e train e giyechilam that was not high speed but uh, it took 44 hours which i thought was unique uh, 44 hours train e uh, because throughout that journey of 44 hours my wifi was working ami dhaka e kotha bolechi ami new york e kotha bolechi ami delhi te kotha bolechi so ami ami bhablam je my god if they can do something of that kind one can see how they have transformed Uh, a, a country which a lot of people thought jay the dragon is sleeping so infrastructure is is one big area where we need to have a dream of the kind where not that all people would live in cities because by if, if you have high speed train and if it goes dhaka to insulate or dhaka to chiragong or dhaka to uh, dinajpur in less than one hour 
uh, you can see uh, we are talking about time jeta ekebare onno bhabe ki bale ghure jabe and and that will reduce a lot of things the urban population will no longer uh, remain a problem uh, the village you no longer remain village uh, that would develop uh, equally and uh, you know because you would have some stoppage uh, in between uh, for 3 minutes or 5 minutes uh, and 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 in that way uh, the movement of people can be in a direction which uh, i think will change uh, uh, in a big way and 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 on this i have to say uh, the government uh, is 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 very uh, particular and prime minister is very particular on, on this and and working so this is one infrastructure is one breed the second of course is agriculture the reason we survived this time on the pandemic is because of agriculture this is important thing uh, with the, we had bumper crops remember uh, even a covid 19 is shomai and that that really helped us mane oneke onek theory totto bolbe kintu main holo je a bumper crop of food na hole kintu amra aro jhamela portam jeta onek onek desh jara service sector e upor depend kore tara kintu mar khe geche the reason we can have still a grow ei shomoy uh agriculture is is the big one uh keep in mind and and this is this is interesting because back in 73 this is what bangabandhu is saying uh agriculture university gye chilo ebong shekhane she bolche 13 february 73 we can't ensure our expected agriculture production we must underscore integrated farming system to increase our food production more importantly she bolche we must take measures to educate farmers about latest cultivation methods and authority concerned must share their experiences with the farmers and easily you can see uh, how that can be made uh, into uh, uh, you know uh, uh, into reality i'm um, transfer korte pari with the diffusion of what is now known as smart agriculture uh, and of course uh, uh, educating the farmers is is very important to which i will come uh, in a, in a minute with education but uh, this is one area uh, where uh, it, it should not be looked as traditional lock out one ke idea ache je you know uh, agriculture and industry amar industry na hole i hobe na no uh, agriculture fundable uh, bangladesh is an agriculture country uh, and and this is our uh, strength uh, because the kind of soil that we have is is remarkable uh, and not to mention uh, the kind of ki bolo hoy even the rain uh, fall that we have is 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 something that uh, uh, we must say we are blessed so second area of 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 the bangladesh dream would be agriculture the third area of course would be education this is important why our children cannot chole jay even i think uh, if you i'm sure all of you are familiar that uh, bangabandhu commissioned uh, this uh, bangladesh education commission report may 74 যেটাকে অনেকেই উদ্ধত খোদা কমিশন বলে আই ডোন্ট নো কেন বলে ওয়েল সে চেয়ারম্যান ছিল বলে হয়তো বলে বাট ইট ওয়াজ কমিশন বাই মুজিব অ্যান্ড হিজ টু হিয়ার অ্যাবাউট দ্য ডেভেলপমেন্ট অলমোস্ট রেগুলারলি অ্যান্ড গিভ হিজ ইনপুটস অ্যান্ড 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 সি সাম অফ দ্য থিংস সেই জায়গায় বলছে আমি পুরোটা পড়ছি না বাট ইভেন দ্য লাস্ট লাইন ফর দিস পারপাস উই মাস্ট এনশিওর দ্য এভরি সিটিজেন গেটস দ্য রাইট টু এডুকেশন আই থিঙ্ক দিস ইজ this is absolutely important jeta amra ekhono korte parini and i think one of the dream jeta khub taratari kora uchit is 100% literacy not 90% not 95 not the 100% literacy this is how japan uh, way back ki bola hoy 19th century they when they had the debate and i can give you the exact uh, time during the meiji restoration jokhon amader ekhane viceroy chilo mayo je সেন্সাস চালু করেছিল আঠারোশো সত্তর সালে সেই ভাইসরয় মায়ো তখন তার ফ্রেন্ডকে লিচ্ছে রিডিং রাইটিং অ্যারেথমেটিক সে বলছে ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ টু ওয়েট উই উইল টার্ন ইন টু সাইলোরিয়ান রক নাও মায়ো ইউ নো গট অ্যাসেসিনেটেড যখন আন্দামানে সে যায় ওয়ান আফগান প্রিজনার তাকে মেরে ফেলেছিল uh but uh, mayo i think is an extraordinary person and somehow uh, he is not uh, you know aro kata vice roy to edishe dichilo 
but Mayo was an interesting person. Now, Oishomai debate Japan in the major restoration, Tadar main chilo concern chilo why we are behind West. And somebody got up and said, Well, you know, the literacy of the West is very high. And said, Okay, let's go for uh, literacy. In 20 years' time, they almost got into 96 and 97 percent uh, literate Vegasi. And that got Japan up. Don't forget our, uh, in, uh, you know, in, even in Islam, the first word is Ikra, read, you know, uh, education would be, should be the center, uh, but somehow, uh, and this is where we can work because I mean, Monikuri J. Kono Atta, Aske Jodi Uttara decide kore, Tar J. Commissioner Jodi, whoever is in charge, J. Tika Chami Uttara 100% literate kore thalbo, even Shay Takhan Jodi Tar signboard tana te bare, Uttara is 100% literate, I'm sure, Tar Pasher J. Ita Ache, Shay Takhan Bolbe Achha, let me, you know, fight. Oi bhoi Atta Gram Jodi Bole, J. Amar, A Gram 100% literate signboard, and get some advantage from the government for that, for making 100% literate at the Grammy, the next gram definitely uh, that there'll be a competition. And I'm, I, I, I can bet the kind of technology that we have in, in, in less than 10 years, uh, uh, we can uh, make Bangladesh uh, uh, literate. I, I've given some suggestions in, in the paper, uh, how we can even uh, use uh, uh, our Ansar Bahini and sorry, Village Defense Force, Jeta uh, which is 50% uh, Nari, even 50% Purush, uh, how we can use the village different force in order to uh, make 100% uh, literate. 100% literate, literate Bangladesh will also create the image uh, in this world. We are ahead uh, in terms in South Asia context, particularly vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, India and Pakistan. Our literacy particular um, made the literacy uh, higher, uh, but our complacent have to I think we should go for 100% literacy because that will change everything. Now, you see, can, you see an image uh, of Harvard University and Dhaka University. And I mean, deliberately, a lot of people would say, oh, Dhaka University ranking, and I have seen, I, I can see some of the professors are, are also sitting there. Now, let me make my uh, position of the ranking. The ranking, there's a politics of ranking, okay? Because they never look into the budget of Harvard and compare. But Dhaka Shata Harvard compare Koratama, you have a running budget of 2020 of Harvard University with 5.4 billion dollars and you have 102 million dollars in Dhaka. If I had or if Dhaka University had even 1 billion dollar, forget 5.4 billion, they, could, they can also have Amar Toshen to come and teach here. They can have all the good number of uh, professors that they have. Even uh, University uh, Netrakona Koraja, I'm sure you know you will have all the Nobel laureates go to Netrakona uh, to teach. So he, what is important is the budget. And here we need to bridge the gap. You can't have 102 million and then blame Dhaka University. Yeah, but Dhaka University can be blamed for X number of reasons. Even I can say openly because I'm a university faculty, uh, but when it comes to budget and then comparing with Harvard or Princeton, it doesn't make any sense. Not to mention, let's, let's also talk about uh, Harvard University's budget. Don't forget, you know, uh, they contribute to the military industrial complex, which we don't. So morally, and not to mention University of Dhaka created Bangladesh, stood against the Vietnam War. I don't see Harvard University standing so much against war, whether it is in Vietnam or Afghanistan, they're busy, you know, teaching and making money and having a good life. That's not morality. So my, from the moral position also, I believe we are high up, but the point is you can't expect Harvard, whatever you have, the kind of professor, whether it's Noam Chomsky or Henry Kissinger or whoever, uh, and, and say, Jami Dhaka Niyas Te Parbo. The reason why earlier times Dhaka University could boast some of the big scientists because Oishumai uh, Ekhane Eshe Chilo. Oishumai Diaspora Otto Job Chilo Na, Je Tara Shoja Shoji Western World Day Chole Jabe. There was a lot of racism at that particular time. Don't forget, America is a diasporic country. Canada, Australia, they're all diasporic countries. They will always need Bangladeshis or Indians or Chinese to teach them. I remember uh, the physicist Misho Kaku, who, who teaches in the uh, United, United States, she Bolchelo, 100% of my PhD students are immigrants. None of them are white Americans. So the point here, Holo, Bangladesh is not a diasporic country. 
So here, I would, the policymakers, Judy, if they want a, a kind of a developed Bangladesh, you need to have a very efficient universities. And, and, and this, is, this is very important. And if you can have 64 university, 64 excellent universities in 64 districts, then you can make a change. I have two more things and I'll then stop. One is health. Of course, is this, uh, you know, you, if you don't have, uh, you know, the kind of uh, infrastructure uh, that some of the Western countries have, uh, then you can't really keep your children and grandchildren uh, staying here. Because fear to, we fear to happen. Watch, our the pandemic is showing me that if you do our the pandemic, we are relatively better off today than United States or or UK. But still, I have seen, jara uh, afford to pay. They have gone to those countries uh, uh, to see their children and grandchildren, but kader kintu Bangladesh ante parini. But I think the mind has to do that. Mind has to do with, with that kind of thing. Um, Bangabandhu was very firm on this. Uh, look at his, uh, you know, the kind of uh, straightforward position on health, uh, helping the freedom fighters. Uh, he helped uh, local pharmaceutical companies to flourish. This is important. There's an interesting debate on that. Uh, interesting research on that, uh, how he contributed to that. And of course, he also introduced the Thana Health complexes at the grassroots level. So what we need, as, as, I, as I'm pointing out, uh, that we need to bridge the gap, uh, look, at, look at other countries, Bangladesh, when it comes to, uh, whew, when we are in a very bad position, when it comes to education, we are in the lowest with 2.0 uh, uh, as percentage of GDP, where Bhutan is 7.4. And look at uh, when it comes to health, Maldives is 10.8, Turkey is 4.2, uh, we are 0 0.8. We are even lower than Pakistan. That's pathetic. And here I think the elite somehow, uh, you know, I have to say bulk of our elite, uh, Jehetu, you know, they find comfortable of sending their children abroad. Uh, maybe uh, they, do, they don't find enough interest in, 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 in bridging this, this gap. So what we need is uh, my, my one of the things that, the, uh, that come as a dream would be to have 64 comprehensive hospitals in 64 districts. Now, when we talk about comprehensive hospital, it means research come whatever the hospitals do. You need to have research. There's no reason why Bangladeshis cannot uh, make vaccines. You know, there's, if, if, if Iran can make vaccine, uh, and Amra Jodhiyo, probably we can make at one point of time, but uh, I think research is something uh, that has to go uh, with the hospitals. And, and if we can spread it into 64 districts, having 64 comprehensive hospitals, uh, then I think we can make a difference uh, to, to the health sector in, in a big way. The fifth one is the maritime hub. Uh, this is something that uh, I have to say that uh, um, uh, Admiral, uh, Vice Admiral uh, uh, Khaled, who is the Vice Chancellor of Maritime University, impressed upon me uh, when I was lecturing at, uh, at Maritime University that uh, uh, sir make this a separate one because initially I almost thought this as a part of the infrastructure, uh, but then I thought no, I think it, it requires uh, uh, what you call separate attention. Uh, maritime hub, of course, trade, transportation, tourism, and energy. And here also uh, we see uh, uh, the very uh, up forward. Uh, Mujib immediately after independence made maritime issues a priority. In fact, even before the promulgation of UNCLOS three. In 1982, Bangabund enacted the Territorial Waters and Maritime Zones Act in 1974. It's, it's amazing. It's, 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 you know, when you look into all these things, you can see uh, the kind of depth uh, that he had. Don't forget that, you know, uh, it was the maritime, it is through the maritime that the colonial powers came. Back in 18th century, keep in mind, back in 18th century, China was the largest economy in the world. What you have today is re-rise of China, not rise of China. And in 18th century, undivided India was the second largest economy in the world. And in that undivided India, Bengal was the richest province. And that's precisely the reason why British entered uh, India or South Asia through Bengal. And Bengal suffered the most. Uh, don't, it was in Bengal or, or greater Bengal as we talked on Bihar and Orissa Tara, Kete, Tukutuku, whole Bengal was, we went through a cartographical massacre 
uh, British because British thought that undivided Bengal is a power. Uh, I know uh, Professor Harun Bhai uh, works on this. Uh, this is what Mr. Risley uh, wrote to Lord Curzon that uh, undivided <laughs> Bengal is a power divided and it will go in many ways, quote unquote. Uh, and, and they, uh, first of all, the cartographical massacre, Assam ke shuriye and then uh, tarpore 1905 jokhan abar duita bhaag kollo, jokhan 1911 abar akshate kollo, tokhan oneki khal koreni tara Bihar and Orissa ke baad gye dilo. Very clever, very clever. You know, tara aage kindu Bengali shate chilo, or bhaag kore dilo, tara poros tara shanti paini 1947 abar Bengal East and West and and I, and I'll say the British were absolutely greatly involved in this cartographical massacre. But even with that cartographical massacre, there is now a re-rise of Bengal or re-rise of Bangladesh, uh, I would say. So I'm not surprised that Bangladesh is having the economic growth that it has now. Uh, we are the eighth largest country in the world, keep in mind, even after cartographical massacre. If it cartographical massacre now, we would have been in the even you know, fourth or fifth Chulajetam. There are more Bengalis than there are more Bangladeshis than Russians. Keep in mind. So uh, we are uh, the eighth largest. Uh, I, I made it a point in uh, in another uh, occasion speaking that if there is any reform in the UN, uh, if ten countries are taken on the basis of demography, Bangladesh should be a permanent member of uh, the UN. That that's that's my argument. Jodi kono reform hoy, jodi my argument is. Uh, the reform uh, Habana, there will be a series of other UN. Uh, so this uh, maritime hub is, is important given the fact if they have come for the honey, uh, the colonial powers, uh, you, can, you can see uh, we can also start exporting the honey uh, from, uh, from Bangladesh and Bengal. So we need uh, the deep sea ports, uh, as many as uh, possible, Jatokani Dorkar, in terms of the development. It, 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 it comes part of the tradition and amra jehetu nodir matrik desh we are a water country uh, we are not a land country uh, you know sea is very natural and if you go back to 18th and 17th and 16th century you will see the remarkable uh, maritime uh, connectivity that bengal had to the point that we were uh, a very strong shipping uh, you know uh, what you call a shipping country in, in those uh, in those days uh, which is now been rebuilt a little bit uh, we now build ships even for some of the European countries, but I think there is a big dream that can be worked on that. Final one is the youth entertainment. Okay, you, you have infrastructure, then you have agriculture, you have the health, the education, uh, the maritime, uh, and, and then you, you need to have the youth entertainment. And, and this is important, and I was citing, as I was reading Mangabundu's uh, uh, book, The Unfinished Memoirs, and you see, this is what he wrote, that in school, I was crazy about sports. I, I enjoyed the word crazy, at least it got translated uh, uh, in an interesting way. In school, I was crazy about sports. My father himself was a good sportsman. I was captain of the mission school. When my team played father's club, people were quite excited. Our school team was quite strong. Now the last line is, is, is superb. So Bolche, we used to admit players of the region and exempt them from paying tuition fees. Now you can get a cue out of it how you encourage entertainment and entertainment in all areas, in, in, in music, uh, in fashion, uh, you, you, you know, uh, the youth needs entertainment. And, and that's precisely the reason why I hear the young Rabolina Bangladesh, uh, uh, the Western world is more colorful. Uh, I, I have seen, as I said, uh, you know, some of the countries in my life, uh, change by making entertainment the central. Uh, even a city, a small city of six million, uh, Singapore, uh, look the kind of entertainment that uh, investment tara korche. You need to invest in entertainment, and this is where I think you can have an anti-fundamentalism uh, project. If you want to get rid of fundamentalism, believe it or not, this is one area where you need to work. Now, my final slide is is very important because all the six uh, dreams that I'm uh, referring to, or the six areas. Jitami uh, My final slide is, is important because how you do it or, or who would be joining, here I say that let us engage the Bangladeshi diaspora. Let us bring them in. 
Bangladeshi diaspora is a new diaspora. It's not an old diaspora. Bangladeshi diaspora is, is one. They still they feel connected because akon iPhone, sorry, akon my smartphone ache. They can talk uh, every second. Our children and parents and 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 some of them are absolutely bright ones and they're working on it. And then this particular photo will tell you. And if you look at some of the faces, how excited they are because they named one street in the United States as Bangladesh Boulevard. And, and they find that they are privileged. They almost want to change the leaders. These are the people I think they would work for Bangladesh in, in one of the six areas or more areas. There's no reason why they can work and develop one particular village, whether it's in health or in education or infrastructure or agriculture, you know, all the possibilities are, are there. So they need to be uh, engaged. And, and, and this is where I, I, I say uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, must make it, uh, must concretize it. Uh, I remember speaking before the uh, ministry, in fact, the Honorable Minister was also there, and, and he said that we would sit down and work on this. I, I, I think that would be a good beginning. How you package the Bangladesh dream for the new generation who are desperately leaving Bangladesh because they don't find uh, in interest here, and their children, and they don't come back. Uh, I have no problem people going out and getting an education uh, and coming back, but they don't come back. And I can give you one example. And, and, and I was given by a former, uh, sorry, uh, incumbent ambassador, Amake Bolichilo, that none of our children, none of our children are in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Full stop. All our children, bulk of them, live abroad. And this was Amake Boliche. Uh, I can give you exactly the time, two years from now, Boliche. Uh, and he's it's still an incumbent months. ambassador. Still an incumbent ambassador, She Boliche. It's how sad they normally, you know, uh, parents said profession follow kore she jai because they learn a lot you know uh, it's quite you know uh, Shiv Shankar Menon probably would be a, a good example in, in that regard but there are other examples in the world uh, Dr. Chile, Dr. Hawata, the engineer Chile, engineer Hawata but it's so sad that none of the children of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who have served abroad are there in the Ministry of Affairs so where the knowledge where the wisdom that they carry is, is, is it all goes vanish. I, I think I've spoken a lot. I will end with the concluding remarks and I will read it out so it, it becomes uh, very, very simple for all of you. Uh, and this is what I write uh, at, at the very end. Leaders go through ups and downs in their life just like ordinary citizens. But what distinguishes leaders from ordinary citizens is the vision that they inculcate in the people's mind. Mujib is an extraordinary example of such leadership. But in the case of Mujib, there is more to it. The state of Pakistan incarcerated him for more than 12 years, yet it failed to arrest his vision and the perseverance to attain it. Even when Bangladesh was in a dire situation, Mujib reminded the world about the resolve of the people, and I quote, to live in freedom and with dignity as free citizens of a free country, unquote, and the thirst for a better future. The younger generation of people, both within the country and outside, can certainly take a cue from it and engage themselves in contemporizing Shonar Bangla and making the Bangladesh dream a reality. Thank you very much.